Hi there. Have you ever locked yourself out of the house somehow and had to wait for help? Or maybe you lost the key to a padlock and you did it to get it open. This can happen to anyone. And it can be a glaring issue to those of us who forget things easily. That's why I will be teaching the prime basics of lockpicking in this relatively short how-to video. Before we begin with the actual picking, it's important to know how a lock works. Here we have our simple 5-pin lock. Notice how all the pins are varying in terms of position. When I insert the appropriate key into the keyhole, you'll see that all the pins on top, which by the way are called driver pins, line up neatly and the cylinder is allowed to move freely. And in there you can see the row of key pins. When I insert the incorrect key into the lock, the pins are once again jumbled in placement and they obstruct the cylinder from moving. This is how a lo large majority of locks work. Okay, now let's get this started. I'm going to need some locks. I'm going to use all my locks to show you guys how it's done, and then you're gonna need your lockpick. So, and I know I know what you're thinking, like, well, Spencer, I don't know, I don't know where to get those things. Well, I'll tell you where to get them. You don't, you don't, you don't get them. You're not gonna use these because they're expensive, and you don't have to get them. You're gonna use two of these magnificent little little gizmos. And they're called bobby pins. That's good. So anyways, we'll start with one. What you're going to do first, your step one, is just pull your bobby pin so that it's straight. You're going to need, later on, some pliers. There's usually some sort of plastic or wax tip on the end. You're going to take that off so the lockpick or your bobby pin can fit into the lock. So I'm just going to grab it and pry it off. Now, the little ends on the end are kind of sharp, so you don't want to start poking yourself. Just, oh no, I poked myself and now I'm bleeding. Warning, these tips are really sharp when you take the wax ends off. So now we can continue making those tools for our lock picking. And you're going to continue. Make sure take off the wax tips. And remember to be careful, make sure you take them off both sides. I'll explain why later. Make it as, as straight as can be. And then, starting from about one inch, roughly, from the straight side, you're going to push it into a 90 degree angle. This will be used as your tension wrench. And next we'll be going at our lockpick. Again, mix this one straight and make sure to take off the wax tip again. There we go. Keep straightening it. And once you're about at where I'm at, at straightening it, you're going to take the wavy end and start curling it. 
taking steps up to make a nice conch shell like curl or swirl. Like this will be used as your lockpick handle. You don't necessarily have to put a handle there, but it can save you from a lot of blisters, and that's why I like to use it. Next, we're going to take our lock. We're going to just take the very tip of the lockpick and insert it into the top of the lock or keyhole. And vertically, where you are going to bend the pick. Just a little more. Now I'm satisfied with my bend. Now for the actual picking of the lock. Now, this is where I explained to you why I took off both ends of the tension wrench. See that wherever I put the tension wrench, it just keeps slipping. won't do what it's supposed to do. So we're going to make some customizations to our tension wrench. Take the wavy end with your pliers. You're going to curl it about two-thirds of a centimeter. Like that. And then, you can see the pins in there. You're going to put the tension wrench where the pins are. And see now, I can put pressure on the lock cylinder. Next, I'm going to take my lock pick. I'm going to start picking. You're going to take you're going to take your lock pick and insert it all the way back into the lock. And Feel each, each pin from the back to the outermost. Keep pushing each pin up using the leverage of your curve. You're going to want to feel each and every one. But don't spend too much time on the same pin for too long. Ah, and there, you'll feel that we've hit the shear line. And the shear line is when all the pins have set into, into their respective chambers. And there, I pushed it forward, and it's open. I've picked five pin locks before. Four pins are obviously more suited for beginners. And now we can use the longer edge of our tension wrench to get the bottom. Same as before, I'm going to put my... I'm going to start from the back and move and work my way up to the outermost, pushing down each pin softly. And then I already I hit it, and there it goes. After you've picked your first four pin lock, it's best to research more techniques to picking them. There are all sorts of different lock systems methods to lock picking. You won't have learned much by picking just one lock. Practice with other locks and make sure you develop a clear understanding of how, of how they work. I hope what I've discussed has produced an interest in you to research more into the topic of lock picking, and of course, to go pick locks yourself. Only your own though. 
The motivation of locksmiths around the world is to find, expose, and eventually discover ways to fix any imperfections of lock systems and mechanisms. Thank you for watching my how-to on lockpicking, and happy locksmithing.